posted my handout and yeah. my my presentation will be based on the handout in in, in the order um, for a lot of your real estate professionals um, it looks like uh, our government is allowing uh, professional real estate people to incorporate now um, the rules are not finalized uh, it's my understanding um, they are still accepting proposals and the, uh, the, the intended start date to be eligible to incorporate will be October 1 uh, of this year. Now, the first part of the handout are just some highlights from the proposed Ontario regulations and there are more details. I provided the, the web link if you want to read more details of the Ontario regulations, but here are the highlights. Um, if you are an individual that's a registered broker or salesperson, you can incorporate a company and you have to own all the voting shares and you are the sole director and sole officer. Now, you can have family members own non-voting, uh, we used to call them preferred or special shares. Now, um, the acronym is PR. EC, PREC. The PREC may not carry out any trading of real estate, meaning you, you, you cannot use your corporation to buy and sell real estate. The only thing your professional corporation can do is provide the real estate service. Um, and of regulations will be amended to allow real estate brokerage to pay commissions directly to your PREC. And of course, the other main thing once you set up your PREC, you notify the, the Registrar uh, Real Estate Council of your legal name and address. Now, to incorporate, the, here are um, a number of considerations. One, you can hire a lawyer to incorporate. Uh, depending on the lawyer and uh, all the services you want, lawyers' fees to incorporate can can be anywhere from $1,000 to $1,800. If you are fee sensitive and you know of a paralegal, they, uh, paralegals can probably do the incorporation for up to half the cost. And if you're really fee, fee sensitive, you can go online and set up the corporation yourself. Um, and, and, th and that is available to all, all people. Now, when you do incorporate, you're going to have to register new HST numbers and new payroll deduction numbers. As a self-employed real estate professional, you may already have an HST number, you may already have an, uh, a payroll deduction number, but when you incorporate, you're going to need new CRA numbers. Um, now, if you have employees, you may need to register for the EHT, and the uh, EHT is employer health tax. Now, this will only apply to the super high earners uh, who's doing very, very well, because employer health tax only applies if the salaries out of your PREC is over $490,000. And if you do have employees, you're gonna to have to register with WSIB, Workers Safety Insurance Board. Now, right now you have your, you are considered a self-employed sole proprietor. The process of incorporation, the process of incorporation also involves transferring your sole proprietorship to your corporation. Now, our tax laws in Canada will consider that transfer similar to a sale, similar to a sale of your business. For, for real, realtors who have who've been around for a while, they have a client list, um, you are considered to have an existing business with goodwill. And if you were to sell your practice, and I, this part I, uh, I'll need to hear back from you, I don't know how often a realtor can sell their real estate practice. I don't know how frequently that happens, and I'm not sure what the market rate is. But if you are able to sell your real estate practice, 
you're going to sell it for its fair market value. Now, switching over to the transfer of your real estate practice to corporation, everything's the same. You got to treat the transfer of your sole proprietorship real estate practice as if you sold it to a third party and you have to report uh, a, a, a fair market value on the form. Now, if you were to sell it to somebody else, you'll have a capital gain. Well, the thing is, you're, sell, you're transferring your practice to a corporation. It is a sale in terms of Revenue Canada, but Revenue Canada will allow you to transfer the sole proprietorship to your corporation um, tax-free, and it's called a rollover, and you have to fill out what is called a Section 85 form. And for those people who are, are about to do it, um, we can discuss a little bit more about the, the process of the Section 85 rollover. Um, if you are transferring over any type of equipment and cars, um, there is a exposure to HST, um, but you can reduce um, uh, the HST exposure by filing an HST election form called a GST 44 form, which I documented on point four under considerations. Now, Steven, yes. Th this tournament, I have a question. Uh, I just like uh, jumped to another meeting uh, uh, two minutes ago. So uh, I just uh, turn around and then I see, I hear you talk about this. I have one question that is, is, is returning to me. Yeah. That uh, let's say our agent, uh, one of them is Tony Ma. He made like a uh, hundred thousand this year from January until now. Yes. Some commission. Uh, um, I didn't hear you, t uh, s s s Sammy. I lost your voice. Okay, the one okay. I uh, transfer those uh, unpaid commission to that company to pay. Okay, I, I th if I understand you correctly, okay, the example is, let's say someone earned 100,000 already today, okay? Right. And, and then next week, we set up the corporation, okay? Right. So the income earned from January 1 to the date of incorporation is still on your personal tax return. Oh. Okay. And then okay. the only the income earned after incorporation, after the, the transfer to the corporation is taxed in the corporation. Okay, um, is, that, is that clear? Is a, is a, yes, clear. Is it possible that to say, I can ask the brokerage company to hold my commission. Let's say they, the company is supposed to pay me September 2nd today. I say pay me and uh, roll over to my corporation after October 2nd. Is that okay or no? It is okay, but technically, um, okay, real estate is not the same. Is, is, uh, if I were trying to compare it to another business, who, let's say a business that buys and sells uh, cell phones. All right, right. let's right. do an, an example. Right. Let's say, um, this cell phone, um, I sold it on August 31st. I made the sale, but because I had to receive, I had to receive the inventory from my supplier. Uh, I told my customer to come pick it up on September 2nd, but the customer already put a down payment. Uh, let's say the customer put down a down payment of a hundred. So that means I had an accounts receivable of uh, $500, okay? The economic mm -hmm. event already occurred on August 31st, all right? Mm -hmm. for, for this mm -hmm. type of business, I already had uh, a $600 sale. I had a $100 deposit and $500 accounts receivable. Mm -hmm. So it still is an mm -hmm. August 31st sale. Now, in oh. now now let me tr now let's transfer to your business. Um, I think the question is when did legally did you earn the commission? Okay, because taxes in Canada mm -hmm. is not. It, oh, um, 
with the exception of farmers and fishermen, taxes in Canada is based on when you earn the income, not when you receive the cash. Oh, okay. Okay, because for, the, for okay. what you described, Sammy, technically, on, as of a certain date, you already earned it and you had a commission receivable. All right. So the taxes are based on when you earned, when did you legally become entitled to the commission, not when the commission was physically paid to you. So okay. how's, how's that, Sammy? Okay, that's good. Good, good. Okay. All right. Good. Um, under considerations number five, okay, when you have a corporation, a corporation is a, is a separate legal entity, is a separate taxable entity. And the thing is, whoever you buy insurance from, business insurance, you have to notify the insurance carrier that you're now operating under a corporation, which has a different name. And if you don't do that, you might be at risk of losing your insurance coverage. Okay. Uh, what else did I say here? Okay, when you set up a corporation, you're going to need to go to your bank to set up a new bank account under your, corp under your corporation. Plus, I highly recommend for all my clients that they have a business uh, credit card. So when you set up your new corporate bank account, set up a new corporate credit card. It's very important. Uh, okay, regardless of the PREC rules, I always tell my clients, separate your personal banking and personal credit card from your business banking and business credit card. All right. Um, having a separate credit card for business purposes will be important, important because for anybody who received a Revenue Canada audit, Revenue Canada audit, um, they've been very tough. They've been denying uh, HST input tax credits on personal credit cards. So it's very important to get a business credit card. Uh, what do we have here? Sure. This is a, uh, this is Tony Ma again. I want to jump in here. Yes. Uh, for those people in the seminar now that uh, I want them to learn one thing is like uh, Stephen just mentioned that when you should separate your business income, business credit card, business accounting from your personal. Um, so one thing is important that in the past six months, or like uh, five months that we have gone through the pandemic. Uh, Aurea and the tribe just sent a, a notice out yesterday, uh, maybe uh, August 31st. As long as you have a business account and as long as you have some business expense back in 2019, every single real estate agent are eligible to claim the 40,000 small business loan and uh, 10,000 is, um, what do you call, for, grant. For, forgivable. At a year, yeah, forgivable at the year end of 2021, as long as you pay off the 30,000 in full. And uh, I managed some uh, commercial uh, property, the, some restaurant, some uh, small restaurant operation, they pay all the cash. They do not make any profit. They are not able to claim the SICRA, which is a commercial rent assistance program. So I just want to mention this thing here that, you know, as a real estate agent, if you want to practice real estate for long term, you need to separate your personal accounting, banking account, the credit card information from your business. So it is better to, um, to uh, get this separation. Uh, but uh, Steve, I have uh, one more question. Let's say I'm not going to uh, set up the prep. I'm still uh, be the sole proprietor, but yes. um, do I need apply a business number for my, or just my actual number is my business number? Well, the thing is the business number uh, for a self-employed sole proprietor will be based on whether they earned enough money to file HST, right? Like you need a okay. business, you need a, okay. Number one, um, if you're making more than $30,000 a year in commissions, you have to file for an HST. And, with an, and, and so what that means, you need a business number. So you need a business number. The business number and HST number are the same. 
the business oh, number, okay. the team number, and the employer payroll number is the same. If you're paying a payroll or issuing a T4A, you need a business number because um, so that so to, there's no misunderstanding. The business number is the same number for the HST and for employer payroll number. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Okay. All right. For those people who are starting starting into the business. Now, um, okay. When you set up the corporation, you are the owner of your corporation. You are the shareholder of your corporation, but you are also an employee of your corporation. And if you're an employee of your own corporation and you pay yourself, you'll be required to issue a T4A, uh, sorry, a T4 to yourself, not a T4A. Now there's a big difference here because if you're an employee and you're required to issue a T4, you are required to take Canada pension deductions and income tax deductions and remit it on a monthly basis to Revenue Canada. These owners will be exempt from unemployment insurance, EI. Now, I, have, I do have a number of uh, real estate clients this may be a major adjustment because a lot of the real estate clients I have, they are not disciplined in sending in tax installments on a monthly basis. If you set up a PREC and you take money out of the company and you record it, you have to record it as a salary. You have to take Canada pension off, income tax off, and send it to Revenue Canada on a monthly basis. That may be a major change, uh, operational change for many people. And the thing is, do not, um, do not underestimate um, how expensive late filing penalties and interest are with Revenue Canada. Once you are an employer, you have to send in your, your, your payroll taxes every month. It'll be the 15th of the month for the month prior. Uh, the eighth consideration, is that if you have a corporation, then you should immediately update and revise your will, power of attorney. And in fact, when you have a corporation, you should ask your lawyer to prepare what is called a secondary will. Now, the reason why is if you only have a general will and you have a prec corporation, and let's say your prep corporation, you're, you're successful and it's worth uh, uh, $200,000. Well, if someone passes away, there'll be probate uh, calculated uh, on the shares of the private corporation. Now, if you have a secondary will that says, okay, if I pass, uh, the shares of my private corporation will go to my spouse or to my adult children, or um, uh, something similar like that, there'll be no probate calculated on uh, the shares of the private corporation. Uh, for those people who are not aware, probate in Ontario is a, is a death tax. And probate in Ontario is one and a half percent of the fair market value of your assets on the day you die, okay? Um, the next section, what are the advantages of the incorporation? Okay, thanks for scrolling it, San, uh, Sammy. The advantage is, okay, small business corporations in Ontario, the combined federal and provincial income tax rate is only 12.2% well, on net income under half a million dollars. Now, if you're making more than half a million dollars in your PREC, the tax rate is 26.5% for the net income over half a million. The first half million dollars of net income is still only at 12.2%. Now, this is significantly lower than anybody in the top personal tax rate. In Ontario, the top personal tax rate is 53.53% for every dollar over 
$220,000 in personal income. Now, if the real estate professional does not need to take all his earnings out of the corporation, there's an opportunity for tax deferral and tax savings by leaving money in your corporation and investing the excess cash. Um, again, okay, the next point. Again, I don't know how often real estate practices are bought and sold, but if you are in a position to sell your real estate practice and you sell the shares of your PREC up to, up to $870,000, on the sale of your shares will be tax-free under a capital gains exemption for small business corporations in Canada. Now I'm gonna to go to page two. On page two, if you have a corporation, you can choose a non-calendar year end. As an unincorporated individual, you're filing your taxes from January to December. If you're a corporation, you do not have to follow a tax year from January to December. You can go from February to January. You can go from March to February. You can go from July to June. And what is the advantage? If the example I give is the example, I says, if a corporation has a July 31st year end, let's say it made a taxable income. It can declare a bonus and have an immediate corporate tax deduction. So in a very simple example, let's say the corporation made a $100,000 profit. Ordinarily, it would have to pay $12,200 uh, $12, within three months. What a corporation can do is it can declare a $100,000 bonus to the shareholder the bonus does not have to be paid until January of the next year. So now you've deferred the payment of tax from one calendar year to the other. Um, and the individual will report the personal tax in the next calendar year. Um, this can be used to, uh, if there are cash flow issues, if you declare a bonus from one calendar year to another, you end, you end up deferring the taxes for, for the fiscal payment of tax for another four, four to six months. Um, one significant example, uh, one significant advantage of a corporation is um, you, can buy, you can set up a company pension plan. Now, um, I can't tell, um, but as a sole proprietor, you are right now entitled to buy an RRSP. And I don't know how many people are committed to buying the maximum RRSP. Now, for the year 2020, the maximum RSP is $27,230, which is significant. But if you are one of the super high earning real estate professionals, um, $27,000 may not be a significant tax deduction. If you are a super earner in your real estate corporation, you are entitled to create an individual pension plan, which I'll IPP for short. You can set up a pension plan for yourself uh, company pension plans is a, is a one hour seminar presentation in itself, but what is a major difference? An individual pension plan, if set up, I have, I have dentists that are able to put in $42,500 directly into their company pension plan, which is a significantly higher amount than the RSP maximum. And it's a direct deduction from the corporation. If you are relying on RRSPs to fund your, your pension, you are paying your RRSP with after personal tax money. Meaning in order to have $27,000 in your hands, you have to pay yourself a salary of around $50,000.
and then you pay the tax and you have $27,000 left to buy your RSP. With a company pension plan, there is no personal tax involved. The company writes the check directly to the pension, uh, pension trustees. The company gets an immediate tax deduction. There is no personal tax to you. The cash flow, um, the resulting cash flow is so much better if you have a company pension plan. And it's more than just $42,500 a month, uh, a year. The thing is, there's something called past service contribution. If you did not maximize your RSP in the past, you have a past service con catch up contribution that can add tens of thousands of dollars more into your company pension plan. Um, now, the, the third bullet point on, on uh, page two, some, t some taxpayers prefer, will choose to take dividends only out of their corporation and no salaries. Is that an advantage to some people? It can be. Why? Because if you take only dividends, you have no payroll tax of CPP to pay. You have no workers' compensation, no works, work WSIB to pay. You have no employer health tax to pay. But there is a disadvantage if you only take dividends. At retirement age 65, you will probably have no CPP monthly pension. Also, if you, if you don't buy any private insurance or do not register for work, uh, the work WSIB, work, uh, workplace safety insurance, you will have no insurance, no compensation if you get hurt while you're working. If you take dividends only, you cannot buy an RSP. If you would take dividends only, you cannot set up a company IPP pension plan. And for people who are married and with spouses, if you only take dividends only, you may be in a situation where you have no deduction for childcare expenses because childcare expense is a personal tax deduction, but only if you have earned income, earned T4 income. So um, I've had this discussion with my clients and this is something you need to consider. Okay, disadvantage. Well, if you have a corporation, there'll be higher costs higher tax additional costs of maintaining a corporation, legal fees, administrative, accounting, tax preparation costs as compared to a sole proprietorship. Um, subject to the Ontario regulations, but for other professional corporations in Ontario, you have no limited liability. If your corporation is sued, you are still exposed, to, um, your personal assets are still exposed in a, in a, in a legal, legal claim. If you are a very successful real estate professional and the corporation pays over $490,000 in salaries, including your salary, employer health tax kicks in after $490,000 in, in salary. Um, the last point in, on the disadvantage I want to make, a spend, a make sure everyone is understanding. When you have your professional corporation the owner, when the owner takes money out of his professional corporation, there are really only three categories and they all have a personal tax consequence. If you take money as a salary, it'll be, it'll be T Ford and, and personal taxes apply. You take money out as dividends, you have to issue yourself a T5 and again, you pay personal tax. You take money out as a shareholder loan Shareholder loans, if it's non-interest bearing, there will be a taxable benefit um, calculated on the loan. And if the loan is not repaid within one year, the entire amount of the loan is added on the personal, on the owner's personal tax return in the year the loan was made. And this is a very important point because this is one difference from being a sole proprietor. Being a sole proprietor, you move money in and out of your bank account without consideration, whether it's a salary, dividend, or, or taxable shareholder loan. You don't, have that, um, you don't have that privilege as a corporation. As a corporation, you take money out, you have to record it either as a salary, 
a dividend. And if you record it as a shareholder loan, you got to repay it back to the corporation within one year. Otherwise, the amount of the loan is added to your personal um, tax return. And that I consider probably one of the most important points I, I want people to understand today. Um, the next category on the bottom of page two is called tax on split income. The acronym is TOSI, also known as TOSI. Um, the rules are relatively new, but they became effective 2018. Now, the Ontario regulations did say, and I refer to the beginning, did say that they will allow family members to subscribe for non-voting preferred shares. Now, why would someone want to allow their family members to subscribe to preferred shares? Well, the thing is because they heard that if you pay dividends to your family member, then your family members in the lower tax bracket, you save taxes. Generally, that is true. But the TOSI rules um, should not be ignored. TOSI changed uh, the rules for splitting income. And I'm going to go up to page the top of page three. If you issue non-voting shares to family members for the purpose of issuing dividends, understand the TOSI rules are complex. Family members who are issued shares for a nominal share price, and what do I mean? You issue a preferred share for a dollar or a hundred dollars. Before 2018, that was the normal procedure. Just have your family members subscribe for preferred shares for a dollar or a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. If you do that, any dividend received by your family member could be taxed at the high rate of 47%, resulting in little or no tax savings to your family. The best way I can explain TOSI in the time that we have is that what would be an example where TOSI does not apply? And this is where I, I, I put in the paragraph on the top of page three. TOSI would not apply if the family member is over 24 years old, um, invest also money into your corporation, I use a hypothetical figure of $100,000, and receives an annual and reasonable dividend of 5% or 5,000 a year. Now, what are the key factors here? Why, why are the tax rules for over 24? Because before 2008, a lot of private companies were issuing shares to their children going to university. They were paying dividends to their children and um, any children going to university, their income tax will be reduced because they have their own tuition. So that's the significance of the age 24. The other part is TOSI will not apply if your family member, whether it be child or spouse, actually invest money into your corporation. Again, 100,000 is only an example. Um, if you want if it's, if it's 50,000 or 20,000, your spouse or child invests in your corporation, they are entitled to a reasonable return. And again, 5% is not the rule. I just use that as a hypothetical example, okay? Revenue Canada will not impose the TOSI rules if there is an investment and reasonable return. Now, if you invest, uh, if your share subscription is only $100 and you pay uh, a, a, a $10,000 dividend to split income with your wife or child, uh, chances are Revenue Canada will consider that unreasonable and say that, Okay, regardless of the fact that they're in a lower tax bracket and they have tuition to offset, we're gonna tax that $10,000 in your child or spouse's hands at 47%. Um, there is also another criteria. I think a lot of real estate professionals, um, they do have their spouse helping them actively in their real estate business. And if that is the case, 
and they are also preferred non-voting shareholders, another criteria Revenue Canada will want to know and want you to show that your non-family member shareholder is also working on average 20 hours a week in order to avoid TOSI. Okay, now I can't answer the question. You'll be up to you to prove that your your spouse is working 20 on average 20 hours a week. Um, now, if your if your child and spouse are not shareholders, how else can you split income? A reasonable salary is not subject to TOSI. And what is a reasonable salary? <coughs> Excuse me. The Revenue Canada criteria is, what's reasonable is, is what you would pay a third party uh, person if you hired him. If you hired, <coughs> excuse me, if you hired an assistant to work for you for 40 hours a week, <coughs> excuse me, and what would be uh, an office assistant salary? That would be the salary rate that you would pay your family member. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. <coughs> okay, <coughs> to the next point. If you set up your PREC, this next part is important to real estate professionals who already have another corporation. They have another corporation, either they own uh, solely or in connection with other business partners <clears throat> and family members. If you own, if you control another corporation directly or indirectly with immediate family members and the other corporation is involved in another business and it's in any business, and what is an active business? Any business, any active business, any active business is any business that's earned income other than from rent, interest, dividends, royalties, and capital gains. If you are an owner of another corporation and under the tax rules is considered associated with your PREC, your 12.2% small business corporate tax rate up to half a million dollars has to be shared with the associated corporation. So to help you understand, let's say you are, you also are a shareholder of another corporation that makes half a million dollars a year. Could be a restaurant, could be an import export. Then when you set up your PREC, the taxes in your PREC will not be 12.2% it'll be 26 and a half percent. If the 12.2% um, small business rate is used up totally in the associated corporation. Now, part B, let's say the associated corporation is not involved in an active business. Let's say the associated corporation is an investment corporation. Let's say the, it earns interest income, rental income, dividends, royalties, capital gains. If the associated corporation plus your PREC earns more than $50,000 a year net in investment income, then there'll be an erosion of your half million dollar small business limit eligible for 12.2% tax rate. So, um, to make part B uh, simpler to understand, if the investment income is more than $50,000 in your associated group, your 12.2% tax, tax eligibility reduces and it'll be reduced to zero if your associated group of corporation earns more than $150,000 in investment income and the investment income is interest, rent, dividends, royalties, and capital gains. If that is the case, your PREX tax rate will not be 12.2%, it'll be 26.5%.
Um, I'm going to wrap up and uh, I'll see how the group is for questions. My conclusion, <clears throat> professionals who do not need to spend most of the income they earn in their prep on personal living expenses and able to leave some money in the corporation, which you can use to pay down business loans or investment purposes or set up a corporate IPP and pay non-TOSI dividends to other family members could benefit from tax savings and tax deferral and better cash flow by incorporating their practice. Those in the 46.41% tax bracket, and that's that net income, net income, net income after expenses starting at about 149,000, should probably consider setting up a PREC once the rules are approved. Those people whose net income are less than $95,000 a year probably have limited benefits of tax deferral and may consider setting up their PREC in a later future year because the benefits of a low income real estate professional from having a corporation are not very high. Um, I think that's the end of my presentation. Um, the, the bottom disclaimer says, um, pay attention to the final Ontario regulations, which are still to be announced. The tax rules I gave today are based on the tax rules as of today. As you know, tax rules changes every year. And, uh, um, and I would not be surprised if there are some tax rules changed before the end of the year, because the 2020 tax rules by the federal government, the budget was never implemented from the spring because of COVID-19. And there always is the chance that it will change the tax rules before the end of the year. Um, that's the end of my presentation. I don't know um, what kind of questions we have. Uh, Sammy and, and Tony, again, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, present to your sales team. Um, okay, so any questions? Yes, Stephen, can, this is David Chen. Can I ask one question then? Yes, David. Yeah, yeah you're talking about the, the, the corporation. We save a lot of tax, right? So the, you, you can save tax if you are a high income earner, yes. That's right. So what I'm trying to say that uh, you save the tax, yeah, but uh, the money, let's say you make 500,000, save a lot, or maybe over 100,000 in tax in yes. the corporation. Yes. That money, I mean, that, that remains in the corporation account. So later on, how can you allocate or how can you use that money or take out of the money for yourself? Okay, David, I'm gonna answer your question with uh, a simple example to help people understand. Okay, let's say you're a high income earner. Let's say you do make half a million dollars in net income and be entitled to pay only 12.2% tax. But let's say in this example, the high income earner is also has high personal living expenses. Let's say the high income earner is driving a, an expensive car, has a multi-million dollar home, sends all their children to the, best, to the best schools and best universities. And let's say they had to take their half million dollars out of the corporation to pay for their home, university, uh, expensive car. Well, a corporation in this example is not gonna be helpful. If you make half a million dollars, and you need to take half a million dollars out of the corporation to pay to finance your personal lifestyle, there is no tax savings. And it's no difference from, a, from being a sole proprietor. All the corporation is, is revolving door. A half million dollar net income in and a half million dollar net income out as a salary to the owner. So I, I wanna be clear with that. So let's take an example whereby you do make half a million dollars but you only need to live on, uh, you only need to take out $300,000. So you take out $300,000 as a T4 salary, you leave $200,000 in the corporation, 
The $200,000 is only subject to a 12.2% income tax, as opposed to if you took out the 200,000, you'd be paying 53.53% personal tax. So that's where your savings and tax deferral is. Now, your question, David, what can you do? What can you do with the 200,000? That's right. Okay, the 200,000, if you want to, you can invest in stocks, mutual funds, all right? But it's only for um, corporation or, for yourself. Uh, or, and, and what my, my, my recommendation is, reg, if you are actively, and, in, and retirement planning is important, my recommendation is forget about the personal RSP, set up a company pension plan, put in $42,000 a year into the company pension plan because you're gonna get more bang for your buck that way. Now, the other part is the $200,000 there will always be there when you need the, need the, when you need the money. You can pay it out later as a dividend. You, you, defer, it, you defer it to a year. Not, there be a lot of real estate professionals, their income is not steady from one year to another. Yeah, that's right. One year you could be in a high tax bracket, one year you could be in a low tax bracket. To take this David's example, okay, you had a good year, you take out 300,000, you leave 200,000 in the corporation. Let's say for uh, the, the next year, you're not as successful, then and your income is lower, then you can take out the income out in the next year where you're in the lower tax bracket and pay less personal taxes. Gotcha. So How's anyway, you cannot use anything for your personal benefit. Uh, what's your question again, David? I mean, that, that, that in any time you cannot use that money, I mean, that whatever saving in a, a corporation to, for your own benefit. Well, the thing is, David, again, you have to treat the corporation like a separate taxpayer. Okay. And I emphasized earlier in, uh, in the middle of my presentation, if you're taking money out of the corporation, it's gonna be one of three things. It's gonna be a salary, a dividend, or shareholder loan. Now, if you're saying, uh, you, you're asking me, you can't use it for anything personal. Well, the flat answer is yes, it cannot be personal. That would fall into your shareholder loan category. If you're spending uh, $10,000 to put in a swimming pool in your backyard and you take the $10,000 out of the corporation and you don't record it as a salary or dividend, then it's a shareholder loan. But if you don't pay that $10,000 loan, which you use for a personal uh, swimming pool, you don't pay it back within one year, that $10,000 is added to your personal tax, tax return. Okay, got you. Is that clear, David? Yes, thank you. Thank okay, you. Uh, next, any other questions? Uh, here, I see the question from the chart. Uh, he asked, he ask, I think, can you hold real estate under the name of a PREC? I think the question is, can they purchase any real estate use the name of the PREC, the corporation? Okay. All right, you know what? Everyone, you have to pay attention to the final Ontario regulations, okay? Because the draft regulations, all it said was, you could not carry out any trading in real estate, meaning buying and selling. Now, again, su subject to the final regulations, this is what I foresee, which is comparable to professional corporations for doctors and dentists. I have doctors and dentists are buying their own office medical condominium, okay? Now, I foresee that if you were to buy real estate, if you were to buy an office condominium for your real estate business, I foresee that as being an eligible uh, investment for your prep. But, make sure you read the final regulations. Okay?
we okay with that? Yeah. Uh, I think, Stephen, that uh, to further your question, if I understand that correctly, that uh, if you have a prank, even you buy a property on uh, office building under the prank name, but you mentioned that if you if you in that year or which year, your passive income interest, royalty fee, capital gain over 150,000, that it defeats the purpose of low income bracket for, uh, for corporation. So yes. it, it will be never a good idea for you to hold any real estate and their prank. Okay. Um, right? Yeah. Tony, you, you yeah. do have the basic understanding. You do have the basic understanding, but keep in mind, um, if you were to get a GIC, right. um, you're lucky to get a 1% interest rate. Would you agree? No, I'm talking about the capital gain. Like if you hold one real estate <clears throat> today, two years later you sell, you make a hundred thousand. Okay. In the All right. Let's gain. take your example. Yeah. Let's say, let's say you do buy a real estate in your prec and you do at, at some point in time, you do sell and incur a capital gain. Yes. If you have a capital gain of more than $50,000 in that year, uh, you will not be able to have a 12 and a half percent tax rate on your real estate commissions for that year. So um, in that respect, uh, Tony, you are correct. Okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to expand upon that example. There is a $50,000 limit, but uh, I'm going to use the example um, regarding a, getting a GIC. If you have surplus cash in your corporation, you put in a GIC, um, I think you're lucky to get 1% interest on a GIC these days. And in order to, in order to get $50,000 in interest income, you need $5 million invested into a GIC. So there is, some <clears throat> there is some leeway, there is some breathing room before pe uh, some people are able to add up to about $50,000 in, in investment income. Okay? Great. All right. Any other questions? Uh... I want to ask that question. Okay. Oh, Tony, I think I lost the connection. So other agent, do you have any question? Please feel free to ask. Um, oh. Hi, hello. Can you give me your hi. name, please? Okay, Jada. Jada, Jada. Chen. Yeah. Okay, uh, you know, sorry, I kind of signed in a little bit late. A lot of your presentation, I didn't hear it. So I may ask some stupid <laughs> question, which you already presented. Uh, anyway, I, my question is, uh, um, uh, like, you, your family already have, a, you know, my husband, like I say, he already had a corporation, right? So okay. I do get some income from his corporation. At the same time, I do some of uh, uh, the real estate. Then can, you know, if I incorporate, uh, does that matter my income from just the real estate or can I combine all this, uh, you know, income as my, you know, income? Okay, Jada, um, this is my question. You say your husband has another corporation? Right. Are you also a shareholder? Yeah. You're also a shareholder. What type of business is it? Uh, medical. Medical business. Yeah. Okay. And you get a, you get a T4 salary from it. Well, maybe. I don't know. Like a <laughs> accountant did everything, which okay, I don't okay. know. Okay, okay. All right, that business has nothing to do with uh, real estate. Right, but okay. that means if I, yeah. Okay, you know what? Okay, I don't have all the details of, of how it was set up by, by your husband and your husband's accountant. Uh, if your husband has a medical business, are you a shareholder? Yes. Okay, so the two types of income you can get from your medical from your husband's business is a T4 for a salary and a T5 as a dividend. All right. Okay. So that has nothing to do with your prec. Okay. You report, 
the income from your husband's business on your personal tax return. Uh huh. But there is one, there's one, there is one effect. There's one thing that could affect your prec. The thing is, if your husband's business is making half a million dollars a year, up to half a million dollars a year, and is mm-hmm. claiming the small business uh, tax rate of 12.2%, the taxes in your PREC um, may only may, uh, may be set at 26.5%. Okay. Because in my handout, I have a section called Associated Corporations. Ontario Corporations, the small business rate tax rate is 12.2%. Mm-hmm. But if you are an owner, if you or your family own another company mm. that makes half a million dollars a year, you will not mm. get the 12.2% tax rate. Even though I incorporate it as a real estate. Yes. Now, I'll, and I'll, I'll help you explain by giving you an example where you could get it. Let's say your husband's corporation makes 300000 net income a year, and he pays 12.2% on his business income. Well, that means if you make 200000 or less, you are entitled to 12.2% tax rate on your PREC net income because okay. there's a half million dollar limit to be allocated amongst associated corporations. Ada, does, 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 that, does that help you understand? Okay, so you mean like say my income from the other corporation, you know, if it's less than 200 and, you know, and less than my, if I incorporate <clears throat> as a real estate, then I can pay you know, whatever, if I save anything I don't need in my real estate income, so those are only paid for 12.2%. Yes. Okay. Your corporation can pay 12.2% as long as your corporation's net income combined with your husband's corporation's net income is not higher than half a million a year, net after expenses. Yeah, thanks. Net for- means uh, after expenses means after income, uh, after uh, you, you know, you uh, pay the income to the employees. Is that what you mean? Yeah, after I pay employees, yes. Look, okay, you know, Ada, I'm going to expand, expand the explanation. It's not just employees. All your expenses. All, it's not yeah. just, it's your rent, your utilities, your office expenses, your supplies. It's after all your expenses. Okay, so which include also include the uh, the the salaries paid out, is it? Yes. Okay. Oh, so okay. The net the net means whatever you left in your um the corporation after you know your salary or spending everything. If those combined the corporation less than half a million dollars, then, then I both can yeah. If that is the case, then both corporations can pay tax at twelve point two percent. Okay, I see. It doesn't care. So you know, if what is my income? You know, like every year personal income. Personal? No, no. No. Okay. So, I yeah. see. Okay. Okay, That's, Ada. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Anybody else? So can I add a question to the previous question? So if the husband and the wife separately run two different businesses, two different corporations, so that that means the add up value uh, could be one million. For um, okay, to, uh, can you can you repeat your question, please? I, I didn't hear the first part of your yeah. question. Yeah, this question is uh, add up to the question, like uh, from this lady. Uh, so if she doesn't have any share from her husband's uh, business, so can she qualify for half a million, uh, like a twelve point two tax rate? You know what? For her own business, yeah. Very good question. The answer is yes. Oh, thanks. The answer is yes. That is a very good question. 
So in, in the example you gave, uh, is your name Linda? Yep. Okay, Linda. In your case, let's, let's do an example. Um, the husband has, their, has a business, a corporation that's 100% owned by him. Wife yeah. has 100% owned PREC, two separate businesses, no, yeah. no cross ownership of shares. The PREC has a half million dollar tax break. The husband has a half million dollar tax break. The answer, that is, that is correct. So, that uh, so is there any limitations? Like, you know, the two businesses cannot be same kind of a business, huh? but both of them are real estate agent or something. Um, okay, if they're both real estate, I think you have to be careful um, if you're, you're paying each other any type of management fee. I, I think you oh. have to be, I think you have to be careful. Has to be totally separated. Well, if it's totally separate, I say 100% you're fine. If you're paying each other type of management fee, I, I think each circumstances has to be carefully looked at. Okay. Got you. Thanks. Because, okay, you know, what is an extreme example? You have husband and wife both with a real estate license. But in, in, all, in, in all honesty, only one spouse makes a million dollars. One person stays at home and looks after the kids and decides to pay uh, the, the other corporation half a million dollars. I think yeah. in that situation, Revenue Canada would not be too kind to. Got you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right, yeah. well, that's a good question. Next, anybody else? 